Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 and verse the end of that chapter. According to what I studied, I was informed that this particular passage of Scripture is deep. I'm going to do my best not to go too deep. You know, we heard this past week what happens when you go too deep unprepared. And it was absolute, absolute tragedy what took place. Others who had been on that submersible came off of it with a gratitude of thanks that they had survived saying literally you'll never get me on that again. Then I saw where Royal Caribbean had a cruise just a couple of days ago and they almost became a submersible. That's encouraging when you're wanting to go on a cruise and just can't do it just yet. Literally waves coming up eight, nine floors high looking through water when you're not supposed to be looking through water. You know, if I get on a submarine, I expect to look through water. When I get on a boat, I expect to see air. I'm not afraid to come against the deep things, to get into the deep things, but especially the Word of God, because sometimes, folks, we need some deep things of God. The Scripture says that deep calls unto deep. And the deepness in your life in God is determined by how deep you are in the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the Word of God. I think that's important because too many folks have decided that hearing the Word of God is not nearly as important to them as it ought to be. And I don't want to be one of those people. I not only want to read it, I want to hear it. And I'm hoping I get an anointing from God to preach this so good that I want to go back and listen to myself. Is, is, that's not selfish, is it? I get to preach a lot, but by the same token, I like to hear good preaching. And if it's good, even if I did it, I'll, you'll hear me say that from time to time. That was good preaching even if I did do it. Well, I, I, When that happens, I'm going to go back and hear me again. Romans 5, 12, you got it, say amen. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, thus death spread to all men because all sin. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. This was probably the hardest verse right here. He goes on, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him, talking about Jesus who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God, and the gift by the grace of the one man Christ Jesus abounds to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from the one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. And therefore, as through one man's offense, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, the free gift. Oh, hallelujah. What kind of a gift? Free. free. Yeah. It's free, 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 free. Hallelujah. The free gift came. Listen, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. 
For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. And moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded. Mm. I said where sin abounded. Where sin was above and beyond measure, grace abounded much more. And so that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's just something about grace. I, I just I, I know I preached a few weeks ago on grace, but man, I didn't even scratch the surface. And I don't know that I'll scratch the surface any deeper today. But I want to tell you that grace is God's answer for everyone. Paul said, I've got a thorn in my flesh. It's about to, about to pain me something fierce. And they've argued about whether or not it was his eyes. They wondered whether or not it was some other ailment or, you know, thing in his body. Or, or, or. Brother Lamar Vest found the scripture, and I've been searching for that scripture to find it and share it with you again. But Paul's thorn, according to what Brother Vest had found, was the fact that he was troubled by the souls of the people that he had caused to be beaten and in some cases killed. The people who he had caused to turn their back upon God and especially Jesus Christ. And folks, let me tell you, there's just some things you and I have done we may never get peace over. But God's grace is sufficient for you. Glory. I'm going to say that again. I said God's grace is sufficient for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, help me to share this, God, as you gave it to me. God, Lord, help me, God, Lord, to share it, God, completely, directly. And, Father God, with all of your love that can be found. And I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, let us be able to share with others that your grace is the answer for everybody. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. I've pondered the latter part of verse 20 all week long. For where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. There's just something powerful about that statement that I honest to God don't think we've milked that cow quite enough. I believe that I believe that Guernsey will absolutely give another couple of gallons if we'll just pull a little bit longer. Somebody say amen. I believe with all of my heart that when we begin to talk about the grace of God and what the grace of God does for us, we have not even begun to understand fully what that grace has done. I, I hear people who are saved and declare to be Christians, and I believe them to be true in what they've stated. But then I see them looking down at people who don't dress right, who don't act right, who don't talk right. Who don't smell right? I could go on, but you understand. They look down upon people as though they're all that in a bag of chips. Well, let me share something with you. Grace is given to all. Not, not just one or two. Not just to those who've got a bloodline in the church that they attend. I'm talking about grace that God gives no matter how much you smell. No matter how drunk you are. No matter how high you've been. No matter how many you've killed. No matter how many you've beat. It doesn't matter. Friend, God's grace goes beyond your sin. Where sin did abound, thanks be to God, His grace much more abounds. Somebody say amen. And as I begin to ponder that, you know, every once in a while a fellow's just got to go pondering. Don't go meandering, but go pondering. Pondering's good for you if you do it right. As I pondered, I pondered on another verse that kind of attached itself to this one. As I saw this verse, it began to ramble along and rumble along with this verse 20 that I just shared with you. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and 8, for by grace are you saved. Are you hearing me? You're saved through faith, he says. Listen, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Uh. Salvation is the gift of God to you and I who believe. 
We never get to the place where we think that we're the only ones. Well, I'm Baptist, therefore I know I'm saved. I'm not sure about anybody else. And when we think how arrogant, how cocky, then I listen to some of the Pentecostal brothers from the Church of God, from the Assembly of God, from the Church of God in Christ, and the list goes on and on and on and on. And to hear them talk, they sound like a bunch of Baptists. Like they're the only ones that can get saved. I got news for you. God is going to save to the uttermost. Hallelujah to God. Thanks be to God. I love what John Newton said. Hallelujah to God. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Oh, hallelujah to God for his amazing grace that doesn't care how much is in your bank account or in your pocket, doesn't care where part of the town you live in or, or want to live in. Friend, what God is concerned about is will you take the time to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The New Living Translation says of that same verse, Ephesians 2 and 8, God saved you by His grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. Why? It is the gift from God. Oh, we walk around like we got some kind of a spiritual blue blood certificate hanging on the wall. You know, we've even got the spoon we were born with that was in our mouth when we come out of the womb. No, no, no. You can't claim this. You, 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 you can't say, oh, this is of me. No, no. Your salvation is not of you. The only thing you had to do with it was believe. Believe. Have faith. Trust God. Believe. Somebody say amen. But friend, let me tell you, I, I got hold of another scripture that kind of snuck in there while I weren't a looking. Amen. Titus chapter 3, starting at verse 1. Remind them. Who's them? Everybody. I went back and checked out who them is. Them is everybody. Remind everybody to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, not Gentile, gentle, showing all humility to all men. Well, that's good. That's, that's just good wisdom for everybody. Can, if everybody in America would live according to verse 1 and 2 of Titus chapter 3, We'd have it made. But we don't. We live according to the gospel, according to me and mine and nobody else. My four and no more. God doesn't want us living by that gospel. He wants us to live where we look to everybody and treat them with respect. Somebody say amen. We don't look down at them because of the color of their skin or because of the holes in their shoes or the nasty smell that comes off of their clothes. Friend, God wants us to look at people and realize such were some of you, but you've been saved. You've been redeemed. You've been justified. You have absolutely been set free from your sin. Somebody say amen. Listen, he goes on verse 3. For we ourselves, who? Us. We've jumped from them to us now. For we ourselves were also once foolish. Some of us still are. We were once disobedient. Newsflash. Some still are. Deceived. Oh, yeah. Serving various lusts and pleasures. Living in malice and envy. Hateful and hating one another. And when the kindness and the hope or the, or rather the love of God, our Savior toward man, appeared. It didn't happen because of our works of righteousness, he says in verse 5, which we have done. No, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified... Anybody here justified? Anybody here knows what it means that God looks upon you and doesn't see you as a former sinner, an ex-sinner, a sinner that used to be? No, no, no. He looks upon you as justified. Just if I'd never done anything wrong. Justified, he says, by his grace that we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Somebody said, why don't you go to the doctor about this or about that? And I said, well, you know, don't you want to live forever? Yeah, but it ain't going to happen because of penicillin. 
Come on. It, 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 it's not going to happen because you give me a pill and tell me this will take care of all my troubles. My God, I watched TV the other day and I, I lost count. They got a drug. I'm going to check on some of you. Anybody know who Huey Lewis and the news is? It's a couple of you are willing to, you know, some of you are looking down. I, I know you know. I want a new drug. One that won't make me sick. One that makes me feel real good and keep my tongue from feeling three feet thick. I want a new drug. Well, honey, they're kicking them out just as quick as they can come up with a name that nobody understands. Hello. I'm t every time they got a drug for the drug. Here, take this drug. And if you have these problems, here, take this drug to offset the problems of that drug that you took. Well, why don't we just take me off that drug? Oh, no, no. Don't mess up the, don't mess up the routine. Don't mess up. I, I don't want another drug. If I'm going to take a pill, let me take the gospel pill. Amen. Let me take that which is good for me internally and externally. That's good for me here and now and then and later. Somebody say amen. I'm telling you, you can't go wrong with the Word of God. And if you do, it's because you ain't reading it right, Slick. Somebody said, oh, did you know that the, 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 the serial killer, the son of Sam, believed that God spoke to him through his neighbor's little dog? I'd have killed the dog. Paul is going to get, where are you at? Paul, are you down here? Paul is going to have my head over there. Oh, not the dog, brother. You've been proud, sister. Coming to church this morning, this little squirrel decided he was going to withstand me in the middle of the road. He's like that meme I had sent to me the other day. Had a squirrel in the middle of the road. He said, the car is 10 feet away. Now I move. Well, this rascal... Did he, did he, he ran from us, right? Or did he run toward us? Yeah, he come toward us. You talk about brave. When you're, without your tail, you're that big. And you take on a vehicle that weighs several hundreds of pounds. I didn't swerve. I didn't slam on the brakes. I grabbed the wheel and went. I kept waiting here. Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. I don't know how that rascal did it. He threaded the needle. And when I got by him, I saw him. This road is enough. Thank you. And off he got. He headed for the woods where he belonged to begin with. You say, preacher, why are you bother telling us that? I'm here to tell you too many of us playing with eternity like a squirrel in the middle of the road. We think we're going to avoid it at the last minute. Oh, when I've sown all my wild oats, honey, you need to stop going to that feed store and getting those oats. Somebody say amen. When I finally get through taking care of enjoying life as I want to know it, friend, let me tell you, the life you want to enjoy is not enjoyable. It's going to kill you. And not only will it kill you here and now, it'll kill you for all eternity. Somebody say amen. amen. Help me, Jesus. How in the world did we get here? How in the world did we get in the mess that we are in? When you begin to ponder that, which I did, you find out you only need to look to God's Word, and God's Word will tell you exactly what happened. The Bible tells us there in chapter 12, the very first part of chapter 12, Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world. What was he thinking? Adam is that man that allowed sin to come into the world. Sin wasn't growing on trees to be plucked. Sin wasn't coming up out of the ground to be harvested. Sin wasn't even found in a blue light special at Kmart, for those of you that remember Kmart. Sin absolutely was there in the form of temptation. Go ahead, baby. Eat the fruit. I ain't never seen dead before. No wonder women don't trust their husbands. No wonder they have issues with us. If you really love me, oh, don't, no, no, don't do that. And when it didn't seem to happen, what Adam thought in his mind would, you, do you understand something here? It don't always go down the way you think it's going to go down. It don't always happen the way you think it's going to happen. Oh, I tell you right now, I wouldn't have done that for all the, the gold in the world. You've made the biggest mistake you could ever make, buddy. 
And then we, we some, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm telling you here and now. No, they don't hope you're, they're wrong. They, they're hoping you are wrong and they can prove it. I'm so glad that God steps in. I said, I'm so glad that God steps in and doesn't allow it to go the way some people think. But God has His way and His will. And He's determined that His way and His will shall be done. Somebody say amen. When I look at this, sin delivered to the man who was the representative of all of mankind. Do you understand that within the loins, within the seed of Adam, was every person and every nation that would ever be, including you and me? Listen to me. There's just Adam and there's just Eve. Adam is operating in our stead as our representative. Whatever Adam does is going to play out in our life. Whatever Eve does is going to play out in our life. Adam and Eve are one And when Adam, when Adam partook of that fruit, his wife gave it to him. He was standing right there beside her when she bit into it. And when he decided to bite it and completed that circle, if you will, it was at that moment that he gave access to the devil to back up to the entry point and deliver sin into the world. But here's the problem. Sin did not come in alone. Sin had somebody riding in the passenger seat alongside that motorcycle he was riding. That person, that thing, that, that, that horrible, horrible thing that you and I deal with at some point in our life many times is death. Death came by sin. Death could not come, listen to me, death could not come into this world by itself. Sin had to be the avenue by which death came in and when sin was brought into this world death hitched a ride and got inside as well he goes on to tell us plain and simple that death entered through this world all because of sin we just quote unquote came out of the pandemic not everybody got affected by the pandemic not everybody got covid but sneeze at the wrong and inappropriate time. Everybody and their brother's looking for a mask. Cough. And they're like, oh my God, he's gone. We were terrified of one another. Terror gripped this nation. We didn't need to go anywhere, didn't want to go anywhere, really wanted to go somewhere, but we're afraid to go somewhere because somebody might go, uh -huh, uh -huh. oh, oh, I've been exposed. And yet, here's something for you to ponder. The virus of sin was in every single person. Oh, the best Mr. Fossey could tell. I'm sorry, Dr. Fossey. Dr. Fakey. I got the microphone. Well, you've probably got it and you don't know that you've got it. There ain't an illness ever come through my life that I didn't know I had it. Can, 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 I, can I get anybody to say amen? I, you know, whatever the illness is. But I turn around, they give me 23 different symptoms. And you don't have to have all of them. Just one of them. They said... If you've got a runny nose, I've had a runny nose since February of 2019. Some of y'all were kind to me and said, Brother Nolan, that's just old man nasal drip. You don't know how much joy that gave me. Somebody say, have you got COVID? No, I got old man nasal drip. Forgive me, somebody turned a spigot on and forgot to tighten it up when they walked away. But sin, when Adam and Eve both together sinned, 
They caused the virus of sin to immediately not only be within them, but within every child that would be born from them, grandchildren, on and on and on. And honey, I don't care how holy you think you are. I don't care how much you think that you ooze righteousness from the very center of your being. If you haven't got it under the blood, if you haven't asked by faith, believing for Jesus Christ to redeem you, i got news for you. You've got it. You've got sin. And sin is going to kill you. For the wages of sin is what? In fact, you don't even have to really work for it. It's kind of like some of the things that the government keeps trying to give us. Oh, you're going to pay for it, trust me. You're going to, you're going to. That global pandemic of sin spread to every human, and no one was, no one is, nor will anyone be exempt from sin in this world that is born into this world. We're all born with this virus of sin. Paul even deals, catch this, he deals with those who think there was no sin before Moses came down the mountain with two tablets of stone that God had personally written the Ten Commandments in. Oh, there was no sin before then. Yeah, there was. How do you know people died? From Adam to Moses, people died. People died. You don't die because you ain't got no sin. You die because of sin. We die because of sin. Are you catching what I'm saying to you? You need to understand that, folks, even though the law had not been delivered and even though they were not under the burden of the law at that time, they still sinned. They still did wrong. They had the virus of sin within them. And people find that hard to believe. There are some people that believe until God gave the law, there was no sin. No, let me tell you what the law did. The law magnified sin. It showed us what sin could be, what sin was was it was better than Dr. Fauci's 23 symptoms amen God revealed to us that even though they may not have had their individual sin held against them because of the law yet when the law was given all of a sudden things came into focus the virus of sin was in them because they were still dying and death is still the end result of sin. Keeping the law of God will not bring salvation. You better say that again, Brother Nolan. Keeping the law of God. Ten commandments. You, you, you say, well, I've never broken a commandment. Yeah, we, we all have. Yeah, we all have. We, some of us have really gone to town on, I mean, we almost like we're wearing a belt of pride. How many notches we got? I broke that one several times. I'm telling you, the law of God is a wonderful thing, but it doesn't bring salvation. Breaking, listen, oh, you're going to love this. If you like that other part, listen to what I'm about to say now. Breaking the law of God does not bring death. Silence gripped the crowd as grasshoppers begin to chirp loudly. You say, Brother Nolan, that's not true. No. The law of God does not bring death. The law of God shows you and me where we have exposed ourselves in sin, where we have absolutely caused our sin to be seen. And friend, that's just the beginning. 613 points of law from Ten Commandments. But God didn't give you the law of God for the purposes of you breaking it and then dying he wants you to know that those things you do will lead to death, but it won't kill you on the spot. On the day that it was delivered, Moses took the tablets and threw them down. And when he did, 3,000 people died that day. They would probably argue. But friend, they were breaking more than just the law of God that had been delivered. They were breaking the spirit of the law of God. Lord, help us. Why do we flaunt? That. Why, why, why do we flirt with that? Why can't we just accept living for God, living holy, godly, righteous lives and stop this other? Death comes to us because of sin. Beginning with Adam, death comes to us through the sin. It started with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, but friend, it didn't end there. And I got a wild thought for you. If it wasn't for sin, there would be no death. Think. 
if there was no sin, because death couldn't come into this world until sin came in. That's why, thanks be to God, when we get to heaven one day, there will be no more sin, no more sorrow. Somebody shout with me anytime. I'm just, when, when the absence of sin is removed and death is removed, friend, we'll live forever. Praise God. Why? Because we've taken away the one thing that's killing us. Glory to God. you got to grab a hold of this and understand. Here's the good news. Adam was a type of Christ, according to verse 14, but in reverse. That yin-yang thing, I guess, huh? Adam was a type of Jesus Christ, but in reverse. Instead of bringing life, Adam brought sin into the world, and sin brought death. And because Adam carried within his body all of the unborn peoples, all the unborn nations, he passed this on to all of mankind as our representative. Thanks, Adam. You know, if I get to heaven, if if I was Adam, can we change my name? Eve, come here. Can we change her name too? There's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. The white-robed angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. Oh, there's a new name written down in glory. Oh, yes, it's mine. I said it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am on my way to heaven, never more to roam. Do you understand? The songwriter that wrote that song realized that for some of us, the last thing we want to do is be found by our name. I'm hoping that my my classmates from back in 1975 are going to have a class reunion this year that I can make this year. They, They had one and I couldn't go to it. They started on Sunday. I said, dude, seriously? I work Sundays. Well, won't they let you take a day off? Probably, but I'm not going to ask because my preaching the gospel is more important than catching up with a bunch of old fogies. Amen. Say, so, do they? Yeah, this couple, three or five of them watch live stream. I'm going to hear about this. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't care. I'm here to tell you straight up, there are some things that are more important than the things that we think are important. But I'm hoping we can get together. But when we do, I'm going to be looking for their name because I guarantee you I'm not going to recognize their face. The the way they've been doing it, they got the picture from the yearbook annual, our senior year, and their name next to it. I never will forget, I had a friend of mine who called me up on on their, their iPhone and we did FaceTime. And somebody handed them the phone and said, say hi to Paul Nolan. And they looked and said, Who is that? Apparently, I've changed since 1975. I'm just saying. But I got to be honest, when it was over, said none, I sent messages back. Who is that sitting next to? And I would name the person that I did know and recognize. Boy, was I shocked. A couple of folks apparently found the fountain of youth. Their hair never changed color. Their hair never abandoned them. Wrinkles never attached themselves to their face. They look like they still did with 70 from 19 and 75. And I'm like, what in the world? I told somebody yesterday, I keep looking in the mirror and this old man keeps looking back at me. I don't know who he is, but if he don't get out of my house soon, I'm going to call the law on him. Listen, when Adam brought sin and ultimately death into the world. God wasn't willing for it to stop there. You need to understand something. When things go wrong in your life because you made the wrong choice, you made the wrong decision, thanks be unto God there is one who sits upon the throne of truth and righteousness who has determined that is not the end of the story. Just because you messed up doesn't mean you're messed up. I'm going to say it again. Just because you messed up don't mean you are messed up. Don't let that one moment of indiscretion define you for all eternity. Look to Him. Bow your knee. Humble your heart. Call upon God to forgive you of what you've done wrong. Now, it's not a license for you to commit sin. Oh, if it's that easy, I'll just, you know. No, 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 no. 
Find out what God wants of you, what He wants you to do. Christ came to us representing not only God, but also all those who would believe in Him and thereby receive three things. Number one, forgiveness from their sins. I can only get so much forgiveness from my family and my friends. I can only get so much forgiveness from my church. I get very little forgiveness from the world. No, sir, I'll pay the taxes. Just give me some time. (laughs) Don't look at me like that. Amen. Forgiveness from all your sins. Second thing you get is, and it sounds like three things, but it's actually one thing wrapped up into one thing called salvation. It's justification, regeneration, and the new birth. I'm justified as though I've never sinned before. I've been regenerated. I'm not what people think I was. I am who God has made me through His Son, Jesus Christ. I have been born anew. Hallelujah. In the book of John, the Bible says that that, that Pharisee, Nicodemus, came to him and said, said how, how do I get back into my mother's womb to be born again? He said, son, you ain't, you, you, you're just not following the cards here, are you? I'm not talking about being physically born again. I'm talking about being spiritually born again. Hallelujah. That that is of the Spirit, that which is of the water, that which is of the Word. I'm talking about a spiritual rebirth. Glory to God. Third thing is we get adoption by the Holy Spirit into the family of God. I have two grandsons. I have a total of three, but I have two that have been adopted. You ask them. I don't treat them like they're somebody else's flesh and blood. We went to the courts. We had a judge in a black robe and everything sitting behind a great big fancy desk looking real judge-like. And his judgment was, this day you shall be called. And he called their name. This day, you have a family that wants you, loves you, and supports you. This day is the beginning of your new life. And I'm here to tell you when the Holy Ghost stood before God the Father and Jesus Christ stood there ready to receive us as his brothers and sisters. Thanks be unto God. I'm here to tell you not only did we get adopted, we've been made heirs and co-heirs with Jesus. What does that mean, Brother Nolan? To be a co-heir means you get to share some form of the last will and testament of the person who's left it for you. But to be an heir means that what is left for you given to to you is yours only. Amen. You can share it with others if you want to, but it's yours. Somebody say amen. If, if, if I die one of these days, my boys are going to have to determine what to do with the house. Now, I've left some instructions. But if we both go at the same time, they both get the house, not one or the other. And I've left some instructions what I hope they'll do with what I've left behind. John said he wanted the truck. I'm going to give him the truck. Write it. He's written down, and I've signed it. He's over here. Write it down. Write it down. I've written it down. I told him how much insurance I got, what he needs to do with that. I don't need, I don't need some kind of a thing in stone at a graveyard someplace espousing the greatness of Paul Nolan. Get me a three liter A&W cream soda bottle. Cook me till I'm nothing more than ashes and memories. Put the ashes in the bottle. Squeeze, don't squeeze, but but twist the top back on it. And you can put, in the state of Tennessee, you can put me in the backyard. And if you sell the place, you got two choices. Dig me up and take me someplace else or tell the people, uh, my husband's in the backyard. They'll be like, he must be back there mowing. I'm not mowing it down. I'm fertilizing it up. Hallelujah. I get amazed people want to have these monster things that are, I got news for you, that won't do you worth anything. The only thing that will help you beyond that that point is the blood of Jesus Christ. I got to hurry. Listen, the one thing that you need to understand, even though sin is automatically passed on to each person, righteousness is not. It's received by faith through God's grace and by His mercy. And honey, let me tell you, 
If you want to get it, it's yours and it's free. But you've got to ask for it. Well, my mama, your mama can't do nothing about it now. Your daddy can't do nothing about it now. Your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, amen. Your connections in Washington will not get you into heaven. What's going to get you into heaven is you take the time saying, Father, forgive me, redeem me, save me, make me pure, make me whole, make me your child. Somebody say amen. I I see the lights in the distance. I'm coming in for a landing. Haven't got to that place yet, but I'm close. One man's sin, another man's righteousness. What do you mean, preacher? Well, according to verse 15, Adam's offense, his trespass, his sin caused many to die. But the gift of God's grace through Jesus Christ will abound to many more. According to verse 16, Adam's offense causes judgment and condemnation, but the free gift that Christ brings results in justification. I've had some of my friends say, I'm going to come to your church some Sunday and I'm going to tell them about Paul. No, I said, go ahead. He died at the cross. He died at the foot of Calvary. Go ahead. Tell him anything you would. That man don't live no more. That man don't. I said, that man don't live no more. I have been changed. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I'm saved. Thank God I've been set free. Saved from sin and shame. Saved. I know that I am free. I am born again. Oh, Jesus now is living in this heart of mine. I have been born again. Somebody say amen. I'm saved. You can you can you can point, but it's got the same face. He still got that same face. No, he don't. It's changed. He's got crow's feet, and I don't even own crows. Verse 17: death reigned over mankind because of Adam. But because of the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness through Jesus Christ, believers are going to reign in life for all eternity through, in, and because of Jesus Christ. Death doesn't control me. Somebody said, aren't you afraid to die? Why? I'll be with the Lord. I'm not, I mean, I'm not going to go out and you know ram my vehicle into a wall someplace or play Russian roulette with all of the cylinders loaded. You know, that's not Russian roulette. That's stupidity. I'm going to reign with him. In life, abundant. Adam's offense caused judgment to lead to condemnation. But Christ's righteous act brings the justification of life to all who believe. Do you you believe that there's purpose for your life? Do Do you really believe? If you do, then let the Lord touch you and justify your existence. How does he do that? I don't know. He did it for me one way. He'll do it for you a different way. But friend, he brings justification of life to us. It's terrible when people decide that suicide is their only way out. It's not the way out. They need to know that God loves them enough to show them there is purpose for them and purpose for their living and that they have a justification of life that's available to them. Adam's disobedience made us all sinners. But Christ, His obedience is able to make all who believe righteous in God's sight. He looks at me. He don't see the old Paul Nolan. He sees a new creation in Christ, a new creation of being that has never existed before. He looks at me through the Jesus filter. And all he can see is his son, and he loves his son. I got the landing gear down. Go ahead. Verse 19 tells us something powerful. It tells us that when the law of God was revealed, sin's mask was torn away and became more defined as to what sin really was. And it appeared, because of the law, listen to me, it appeared... That sin was increasing in its scope and in its size. Some would have even dared to have said that the law of God didn't help us. It did more damage than good. It 
And if that's all I knew, I might agree. But that's not all I know. Can I tell you what I know? I'm not going to argue with you about the things I don't know, but let me tell you what I do know. What I do know is this. When it seemed that mankind was absolutely going to be run over and left for dead, lost for all eternity because of sins enlarging because of the law of God, God's grace increased above and beyond and surpassed sin's degrading ability. I'm here to tell you that where sin is abundant, hallelujah to God, His grace is much more abundant. You need to know and understand, the devil thinks he's got you painted into a corner and you can't go nowhere. Let me tell you, they said Red Bull will give you wings. Let me tell you what God will do. God will just pick you up and take you out of there. Somebody say amen. Hello, you need to get this. His grace is greater than your sin. His grace is greater than your sin. For you see, sin can only reign in death. But grace reigns supreme through the righteousness of Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I don't care who you are. I don't care what the color of your skin is. I don't care what the amount is in your, your, your bank account. I don't, I don't care what side of town you live on. I, I don't care what you drive. I, I don't care. I don't care if you wear shorts private joke quick. I don't care. What I do care about is that you know the grace of God. What I do care about is that you've taken advantage of the grace of God. What I care about is that you understand no matter who you are, what part of the world you come from, grace is God's answer for everybody. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. You can't get enough stamps in your stamp book. Y'all remember those? I never will forget, Mama would ask every time we'd go to the store, do you give stamps? I thought, what in the world? And then we'd go to the stamp store. And Mama had been saving up stamps to get something we needed because she didn't want to buy it. Well, she bought it. She just didn't realize it. So all those groceries. But you can't. You, you can't get enough, earn enough, do enough. It's grace. It's grace. What key are you in? C? Uh, drop back about five. Make it G. And it'll sound better. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once, oh, I was lost, but now, now I'm found. I was. And then when, 
We've been there 10,000 years. <laughs> oh, we're bright shining as the For us to sing God's praise, then when we first begun. So I sing, praise God, praise God for His grace, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh yeah, come on, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Father, I want to say thank you for your grace. I want to thank you for the grace that is the answer to my soul's needs. I want to thank you, God, that when man did not stand a snowball's chance in Miami in August, thank God you poured your grace out and you caused us to receive unmerited favor with you, from you, for us, for all eternity. God, I pray if there's anybody under the sound of my voice either here in this sanctuary or watching my live stream, God, let them, I pray in Christ's name, let them, God, receive your grace even now. Hallelujah to God. And know it to be well. And when the battle's over, we shall overcome. Yes, we shall over. Oh, we shall over. Battle's over, we shall wear a crown in that new Jerusalem. We'll overcome before we get the crown. Wear a crown, wear a crown. Gonna wear a bright and shining crown. Oh, when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in that new Jerusalem. And then by and by, when the morning comes, well, when all the saints of earth are gathered home, we will tell the story of how we've overcome and we'll understand it better by and by. Yes, we'll understand it better by and by. Hallelujah. I don't want you to leave if you need prayer. I'll, I'll stay and pray until the service tonight. But I believe God's grace is sufficient for you. I believe that God's grace goes above and beyond anything you can hope or desire. I believe God's grace is evident. Come back tonight and be with us. Brother Andy, I can't wait to hear. He's been all plugged up all week long, getting baptism of the Holy Ghost all over again. Getting re I, I kidded with him. I said, whose message are you going to preach from camp meeting? He said, I'm preaching my own. Atta boy, defiant to the end. Hallelujah. You love each other? Do you love Jesus? Are you glad for miracles? Amen. I'm glad for miracles. Hey, only thing I know to tell you, go with God. Peace be upon you. Bring somebody back with you tonight. Let's have a great time in the house of the Lord. Amen.